Hi, and welcome to Why That Car. Today we have James in his 1952 Renault 4CV. So James, tell us, why that car? Bit of a funny story with this one. I um, well, I first started with my grandfather. He had one in 1954. It was his first new car. Yep. Um, he got the Renault Bug. It went down in the jeans of my dad and my uncle. They grew up in the back seat of one of these. And uh, my dad bought one in 1980. So I grew up in the back seat of <laughs> one of these as well. So yep. I thought it was only fair to pass on that gene to my kids as well and buy one and <laughs> they could grow up in the back seat. So yeah, it started off with my grandfather around the time I was getting married, six months out from the wedding date, and my wife and I were looking for cars for our wedding. And we went to a guy's workshop. He had a heap of old Citroens, and this car was sitting in the back, back of his shed with a tarp over it, and I sort of recognised the shape of the roof that, oh, that's a 4CV. Yep. So I went and had a look at it, pulled the tarp back, went over it, and my wife knew that I was one of one, and thought it'd be pretty cool to have our own car and our own wedding. Yeah. And she actually, well, she actually asked the guy, would you be able to have it ready for our wedding? And back then it was only, it was only painted, that was about it. And uh, he laughed and said, well, why don't you just buy the car off me? <laughs> and I just thought, no way, and I put the tarp over it, I thought, no way I'm buying a car six months out from my wedding, not finished and having to restore it and yep. the money and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, of course. And anyway, we went home that night and she was, my wife's in my ear and she's like, you should buy it, you should buy it. And I get a phone call from my mother-in-law the next morning and she's like, James, you should go buy that car. And I just thought, well, I'm married into the right family here, yeah. aren't I? I was going to say I've got say, the okay from the wife and the mother-in-law yeah, to go buy this a, car. That's definitely very much a marriage material. Yeah. So <laughs> the following weekend, picked up in the trailer, took it home and I had six months to get it finished and ready. So, so two weeks out from the wedding, took it to the church and thought, that's all it needs to do. It's good enough to do that. That's that. We're yeah. done. Sort of a self-bought wedding present for yeah. yourself. <laughs> With the yeah. wife's okay or With future wife's, wife's okay. okay. And the, the mother-in-law's okay the mother too. And the yeah. So, mate, you're living every man's dream, I'm sure <laughs> of. When you say you bought it unfinished, what did you have to do to it? Uh, well, mechanically wise, it was um, not right. It was, I could barely get it up. I live on a bit of a hill. And I, when I first got it home, I got it going, jumped in it, went to go drive up that hill and I swear I could see people walking past me up the hill. <laughs> it was this, the timing was all wrong. Just needed a good overhaul mechanical, mechanically wise. It was there, but it just needed to be sort of put together right and, and played around with. Yeah. Um, the interior wise, there was no, pretty much no interior in it. My dad helped with heats with, with mechanical wise on it. Yeah. And my wife and my mum did a lot of work with the interior, with the sewing and and cutting out the um, flooring and all that, so it was a good team effort. Yep. But so, we got there. Yeah, so family project. Yeah. Which sort of, yeah, makes it a bit more special. Yeah. One thing I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they had my dad, my uncle, and a great Dane in the back seat. Obviously, it's a lot they bigger inside than. Uh, they keep telling me that they that the, they used to fight the back seat with the great Dane. I don't know how they did it. Yeah. The whole car's pretty much fitted for a Great Dane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone, you know, a couple of adults in there. If you don't mind me asking, what did it cost you when you uh, went and seen it and decided to buy it? Um, it was about 6000 Okay. 6000 that's about that I think it was. Yeah. Ten but years ago. That's not too bad. About ten years ago, yeah. 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 But yeah, as you said, six months out from a wedding, it's, yeah, uh, it was, yeah, <laughs> it it wasn't really... Crazy, crazy yeah. decision, but yeah. Some of your best memories in, with your car? Ah, oh, lots. I mean, there's the, the wedding day in it, um, the kids growing up in the back seat of it, people from around the country meet yep. every two years at Easter, and we all okay. gather and we all gather in these type of cars. And um, so I've done a few musters in them now. I've done, you know, driven at the Canberra and Barossa Valley and Echuca just a few weeks back. And yep. so those sort of memories as well, driving the car, those musters. Too. I mean, yeah, there's lots of memories. There's lots of good memories in it. So I'm guessing it's not a very common car, and uh, so you no. obviously joined up with a car club. Yeah, the club's just a great, 
way to um, meet people likewise with these sort of cars. Um, yep. The 4CV register is fantastic socially. People with the same sort of mind that yep. love same these cars, interest, just yeah. want to see other people with it. So yep. to gather and talk to them, and, and the bonus part about it, it's on a long weekend and we get to do these activities around the around these old country towns as well and, yep. and help the towns out. And that's something I look forward to. And, yep. I used to do it when I was a kid, when I, was, I started off with my parents taking me when I was seven years old and I loved it as a kid and yeah. I think my kids love it now too. So That's the thing with, you know, cars, it's that social aspect, it's, yeah. you know, going out meeting other people with the same style of cars and Absolutely. same interests. What can you tell us about the 4CV, like what's the backstory behind it? It's got a really, really interesting history. It was actually designed during the Second World War. Yep. Um, towards the end of the World War and it was designed while well, France was occupied by Germany. Yep. Um, Hitler had control of the Renault factory and was demanded that they only build military cars for the German army and yep. right underneath the German noses three French designers were designing this little full CV. When the war finished they come up and said we've got this design to Louis Renault he, um, he was against it at the start. He was like, no, we're going to build what we were going to build before. And that was sort of bigger, medium family cars. He got, Lewis Renault agreed with it in the end. He got his friend, Dr. Porsche, to sort of come along and oversee, sort of oversee the project as well. He helped out with the production wise. Dr. Porsche is obviously involved with Volkswagen. So there's a little yeah. bit of Volkswagen in it. Styling cues and styling cues and stuff in and it. So forth, yeah. yeah, but it's, um, yeah, it came out, it was the first car to be sold after the war ended. Yeah. Um, it's got a few innovative bits and pieces in it, indicators and steering locks and a heater that wasn't really common back in those days. Yeah. Uh, it really kick-started the economy for France and other countries as well. And that was, they built, built them between 1947 to 1961. That, that's actually a good run for a model of car, like yeah. 14 years when you think about it. Do you have a name for your car? That's Yeah, yes, it's, uh, we've called her Emma. Emma, we've right. We've called her that because yeah. when, I picked her, when I picked it up, it came with all these um, bookwork and manuals and receipts and all the bookwork and manuals and receipts all had the name Emma written on it. So, oh, so it came with a name. <laughs> yeah, so it's a fitting name for the car, yeah. What's one piece of advice you offer to people at home? I don't know, they're, they're just a fun car. It's just, yep. There's quirks in it, there's, you, you drive the car and you actually got to drive it, like you can't afford to sort of lose concentration. There's, you know, there's a hill coming up ahead and you've got to, right, I've got to accelerate now so I can get up that hill. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The kids love it. Um, it's just such a fun car to drive and yeah, that's what I can yep. give people advice. Like if you want something that's a bit of a head turner, that's fun to drive, that's unusual. Yeah. That's it. Look at a Renault 4CV. Yeah. <laughs> Engine capacity on this, I'm guessing, is not that big. No, 750cc. 750cc, you're yep. right. So, yep, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so those heels, make sure you don't lose concentration before you... <laughs> yep, so get ready for that yeah, run-up. Yeah, get ready for that run-up. I noticed we were looking at it before we started filming and for today's episode, but we'll go around it. And it's a rear engine transaxle? Yeah, right? rear engine, water-cooled. Yep three-speed gearbox, so there's not many to choose from if you don't concentrate for that hill. Yep. <laughs> um, no synchro in first as well, so that makes it a bit more difficult. Okay. Four-wheel drum brakes, and yeah. So, so I'm guessing she doesn't go too fast, but then again no. with four-wheel drum brakes, you, yeah, you don't, you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be going too no, quick. No. Yeah, you want to make sure you can stop. Can we open the bonnet? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Bonnet, boot, what do, we, what do you sort of <laughs> call that? Yeah, it's, I'll stop correcting people when they say boot, it's not a boot lid. No, it's wrong. So that's what I mean, it's like, it's like your normal combustion engine, but yeah. back well, to front. Yeah, mm. back to front, yeah. We notice yours is in black. Yep. Was that a standard option colour or...? Oh, they did come out in black, yep. Any other colours that they offered them in or...? Oh, they come out in a range of colours. Okay. Yeah, lots. Um, all sort of, every time of these musters, there's always a new 4CV that comes up with a different colour I haven't seen before. And whether it's original or not, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, I have seen a big range of colours in them. The first ones did come out all in sand uh, yellow, though they only paint that 
was left after the war. <laughs> so yeah. the first from the first early days from 1947 was double all sand colour yellow. Right. But yeah, after so, that they changed to reds and yellows and yeah. golds and blues and whites and yeah. So, so you can be certain that if you see a 4 C V in the sand yellow it's it's, it's a very real, early yeah, yeah. it's an early <laughs> model one. Yeah. Common issues we had in Australia was back then they used to fill the cars up at the servos, grab that, put the oh, no. petrol down the oh, radiator. No. <laughs> so it's got, it's got water written water on it written now. Water on there. Yeah. yeah. To just sort of a couple of um, service so station attendants used to cop a bit of spray from the radiator, but <laughs> yeah, well that should have told you not to yeah <laughs> not to go there. <laughs> We've gotten to know a little bit about your car and why you've chosen it. A little bit about you. First car you owned? Uh, 69 Renault 10. Right, okay. Yeah, something different again. Yeah. <laughs> Rear engine again. Bit of a head turner. I still I still got it. Oh, okay. Sort of, sort of. I sold it to my dad. Now I sold it to, to my dad to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> right, so your dad's just sort of holding he's, on to he's it for you. He's holding on to it. And, yep. Yeah, knowing that one day I'll get it back. <laughs> Excellent. So you still got the f your first car is still in your family? It's... Yeah, still there. Yep. Yeah. We, um, Dad and I and my uncle will help get that back on the road. I bought it damaged. Yep. And that was my first car. It was cheap, 100 bucks. Can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any car you have owned in the past and you regret selling? No, not really. I've, I haven't sold too many. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did really enjoy driving the Peugeot 306 GDI 6 that I had. Yep. That was a fun little hot hatchback. Um, Two litre engine, six speed box. Yep. And that used to drive really well. I used to have a lot of fun in that, probably too much fun in it. <laughs> if you had a blank check and you had any choice of car to go by tomorrow morning, yep. what would it be? Can't go past a Goldwing Mercedes. I just love the, the way the doors open up like that. Yep. And a uh, beautiful looking car. So, yeah, if that blank check ever comes along, it's the first thing I'll buy. So, so that's the 300. Yeah, the SL. 300 SL. Yeah. Yep, yep. Any future plans for Emma? Other than um, drive and enjoy it? Oh, it's an, it's an ongoing restoration. So yep. uh, one day she will be finished or she will get repainted and re and looking a bit more prettier than what she is. And the only other plan I've got with it is that one day my kids will one day drive it. So yep. hold on to it and for them. And yeah. Yep. Well, James. Thank you very much for being on Why That Pleasure. Car. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching another episode of Why That Car. Make sure to like and follow us on our socials. See you next time.